This will work on your Odysseys, your Accords, your Ridgelines, your Pilots, TLs, CLs, RLs. This is a Honda Acura J-Series V6. This engine is bulletproof if you take care of it, if you do your oil changes on time, you keep up with your coolant, and you do your timing belt every 100,000 miles, if not sooner. So right here, I'm working on getting the uh, wiring harness off for the fuel injectors. You have to get those out of the way to uh, get the uh, two lower intakes up. Uh, one tool that I use, and I'll put a link in the description below, is this uh, Astro Pneumatic Tool Company. It's a, um, it's a, uh, basically a quarter inch wobble from like 7.5 all the way up to 15, I believe. But I'm using this to get the, uh, there's, on each side there's two 8 millimeter bolts that hold on the fuel injector rail. And I use that tool to uh, get it out. Uh, the, the front ones are easier than the rear ones and uh, whatever you do don't drop them back there if you have a mag magnet it makes it a little bit easier I'm just getting the rear ones the two bolts the two 8 millimeter bolts on the rear but like I said I'll put a link in the description below I love this set um, also use it for the tensioners on this particular engine as well so right there you can see I have a, um, a magnet using that to get the uh, last bolt out because you don't want to drop it down there especially if you're not taking the uh, lower intake off. So I wanted to show this to you guys. I haven't seen a lot of videos on the lower intake manifold. I've seen uh, upper intake manifold videos on YouTube, but not a lot for the uh, lower intake manifold. Uh, there's two on each side. Well, you'll see here in a second if you get in there. Um, each head has three intakes. Um, so there's six in total and each rail has three holes. So right there I'm just showing you that I had to take out a 10 millimeter bolt in the back top right hand corner to uh, move the uh, fuel lines out of the way and get the injectors out of the way. I didn't take the injectors out at all and when I put them back in I'm just going to coat the o-rings with the light coating of oil to get them back in. So on the front towards the uh, radiator you have two, um, two nuts, actually two studs that have nuts on them. And then you have two bolts actually three bolts on the front one on the rear one you have two nuts and two bolts so um, it's a little bit easier there I'm just showing you uh, the bolts and the nuts on the back so just go in there get a 12 millimeter wrench all the bolts are 12 millimeter I actually did have to move the uh, power steering pump up and out of the way there's two 12 millimeter bolts that hold the power steering pump in the way and then there's a wiring harness that I had to move but uh, uh, it's not that hard. The wiring harness is helping with uh, two or one 10 millimeter bolt. If you have a magnet on a, you know, it's like a long magnet, magnet, magnetic pickup tool. If you help, if you have one of those, it helps a lot. So right here, I am just uh, removing uh, the bolt for the bracket for the knock sensor. So that was kind of getting in the way, and uh, just using the magnet on a long stick or an expandable magnetic pickup tool to get that bolt out 10 millimeter but yeah so the the wiring harness for the knock sensor actually comes up behind the uh, front um, lower intake and then it goes onto a metal bracket and uh, that metal bracket is held in by one 10 millimeter bolt which I'm taking off right there you can see I'm just looping it around to get the bolt out So now it's just a matter of getting the um, the bolts out, the 12 millimeter bolts, and um, working them out. Three on the front, three bolts on the front lower intake, and two nuts on the on the front intake as well. But I'll, I'll show you that here in a second. Um, if you're getting a misfire, this could be one of the reasons why. If you can't figure it out, uh, these gaskets don't go bad a whole lot. They do go bad, but not very often. So just take your time when you're doing this. It's also a good idea if you're in this far to do your valve cover gaskets and your oil tube seals. I'll put some links in the description below to uh, other Honda V6 um, DIY videos that I've done. I have a lot of videos on this particular engine actually. I love this engine. This engine is bulletproof. If you take care of this engine, she'll take care of you. But uh, let me go here into a little bit more detail and explanation. I'm going to slow things down a little bit. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to take out the uh, lower intake manifold. As you can see, one of them's out already, the back one, bank one. 
the one closest to the firewall is bank one. This one towards the radiator is bank two. One thing you need to do is uh, is to get the power steering pump out of the way. There's two 12 millimeter bolts that hold it in. Um, you can see one's right here, the other one's right there. It sits right here, and then that allows you to get access to a 10 millimeter bolt that sits right here, and then this wiring harness. Uh, the reason you want to get this out of the way, it kind of blocks uh, this bolt that goes right here and also kind of blocks uh, a bolt that goes right there. So on these two uh, lower intake manifolds, uh, bank one, the one closest to the firewall, actually has two nuts and two bolts that hold it in. On the one closest to the radiator, which is still in there, and I had to get a mirror and look back there, uh, it has two nuts, one right here, one right there, and three bolts that hold it on. So that one was easy to find. There's another one right here, right over my finger, is it right above my finger, that was easy to find. But right next to that, to the left a little bit, is another bolt. Let me see if I can get a picture of that. Can you see it? It's right, uh, right where my finger's at, right there. That's the uh, third bolt right there. So you got to get that out as well, another 12 millimeter. If, um, if it's just not coming off, like this, like you're grabbing it and you just can't seem to break it free, just step back a second and just think about how many bolts and nuts are left. If it's not coming off right away, there's something left on, there's, there's a nut or bolt that you forgot. Also be careful working around here, don't drop anything into, uh, into your pistons. This is the intake, these are your intake valves, you'll be able to see back there. Grab a flashlight. Those are your intake intake valves right there. So they lead right down into the uh, right down into the cylinder. So you just want to be careful that nothing, no debris or no bolts, no nuts get in there. Also, right down here, that is your knock sensor. So I think it's uh, P zero three five five or P zero three three five or three five five or three three five. I'll put up a, a picture of it right now. But if you're getting that code, uh, that's where your knock sensor is. I saw a video on YouTube where a guy actually takes this little bracket off, and then he's able to stick his hand through there without taking the upper intake or the lower intake manifolds off, and he, he's able to replace it that way. But it is pretty recessed down in there, so. You could, you could actually do it by just removing one side of the uh, lower intake. I would remove, um, I'd remove uh, bank one, the one close to the firewall, and just get it that way. But yeah, if it's, uh, what happens is they, uh, the plastic on them gets brittle over time and will break. Or I've seen rats chew through them as well. So that's where your knock sensor is right down there. All right. So... Like I said, if, you, uh, if you're trying to get this off and it's, and it's tight on either side, go ahead, just uh, take your time. There's a bolt or nut left on and just need to work that out of the way. So let me get this last 12 millimeter bolt here and I'll show you some other stuff. It's probably easiest if you remove bank one and then, and then do the one I'm working on, bank two. Because this bolt right here is a real pain to get to if that other lower intake is on. Now these gaskets, they don't go bad a whole lot, rarely if ever. Um, you'll get a misfire for them, but it's not. There's no real way to test to test for them. Here's a bolt I just pulled out. I'm gonna put over my my bucket. Like I said, there's no real way to test for them. It will cause a misfire if the gasket's bad. And you're gonna get a misfire. One one trick that might work doesn't always work while the engine's running. Here's the seal, right? Right here. There's a gasket. If you uh, if you take a can of brake cleaner, and while the engine's running, you spray around here. And if there's a, a hole or a leak, and uh, you you notice that the uh, engine RPMs actually spike up when you spray the uh, when you spray the brake cleaner, then there's there might there probably is a hole right there because it's going past the gasket and going right in the intake, right in the cylinder, and causing the engine to uh, to accelerate on RPMs. So, with that last bolt out, 
We're able to take out the lower intake right here. Let's take a look at this. So right here you have one bolt here, I mean one nut, one nut there, a bolt here, a bolt here, and a bolt here. You also have these two guide pins, one's right there, the other one is right there. On the other side, um, you have one, you have the guide pins as well. And just to show you this, the gaskets are different. Major difference being this hole right here, which is for your EGR system. So just take your time when doing this. If you get to the last, uh, if you get down there, the last uh, bolt, and or yeah, you think you've gotten to the last bolt, and this thing is still stuck on there pretty well. Take your time, find out what bolt or nut you're missing. Uh, they are all 12 millimeters. Don't drop anything down into your intake with this open, because it goes right into your cylinder. And just take your time. Just take your time and have fun with it. It's also a good idea to replace your valve cover gaskets as, as well as your oil tube seals. I've actually ordered mine. These ones are rock hard. Good trick is to put the oil tube seals, which are right here. There's three of them on each valve cover. Put them in this freezer for a day. Let them shrink down so when you, when you go to put them in, they're a little bit smaller than the hole is. And then do your valve cover gasket, which is one big gasket that sits all around here. Here's the upper intake manifold. And um, there you go. One thing I do like to do, since this is about tips and tricks, I picked this up. I have a couple of these. I actually got a couple for my kids' Legos. And then I decided, hey, man, I need to pick one up for myself. But if I'm working on a specific car, let's say I'm working on a Honda here or an Acura over there, I'll, I'll de designate uh, one of these bins to each vehicle in the bolts and nuts that I pick out or use or have to um, put back and I just put into their own little compartments. That way I know uh, when everything goes back together, I don't have any uh, extra bolts and nuts, which is always a, which is always a bad thing. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope this has helped you out. If it's helped you save money, please subscribe to Bunny's Garage. I started this channel to help you guys and DIY repair. It always, it always saddens me a little bit when I see somebody broken on the side of the road and there's nothing I can do. So I figure this is the next best thing by making repair videos that allow you guys to save money and, and repair cars um, yourself. So if this has helped you out, please hit that like, like uh, that subscribe button below. Leave any comments, questions. You can always email me at bundiesgarage at gmail.com. And uh, like always, I'll keep them rolling for you.